Welcome to Marriage Mondays with the Kings. I'm Kenya. And I'm Shan. And, and we, we are, are the Kings. Kings. Happy Monday to each and every one of you all. We are going to jump into today's show by letting you know who our sponsors are for Marriage Mondays with the Kings. And that's Christian Humor for slash Inspiration. This is a group that is designed to uplift, inspire, and bring humor to everyday life in a Christian way. If you are in the social media, please check them out simply by going to search them on Facebook at Christian Humor Forward slash Inspiration. So now we're going to go ahead and open up with a word of prayer. We always encourage that if you are listening to our show with your husband or your wife, that you would join hands as we go before the Lord. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we come to you right now, dear God, saying thank you, dear God, giving you praise, glory, and honor, Heavenly Father. We thank you for waking us up on this morning, dear God, because we know that there are many that did not, Heavenly Father. We thank you for the very breath in our body as we know that there are many around the world, dear God, especially in ICUs who are having difficulty breathing, dear God. Dear God, we thank you for the positive mindset that you have instilled in each and every one of us, Heavenly Father, as we desire not to focus on the negatives, dear God. We come to you right now in the name of Jesus, Heavenly Father, lifting up every marriage to you around the world, dear God. We ask that you would just intercede and that you would just be in the midst, dear God, that you would just be the foundation and you would also be the head. Dear God, we lift up every marriage that is going through right now because, dear God, we know that many were going through before the pandemic, dear God. But we know that the pandemic and the situation surrounding it is causing stress, undue stress to marriages, dear God. We ask and pray right now in the name of Jesus that you would just bring married couple, husband and wife together, dear God, that they would come together and unify as one as your words say, Heavenly Father, to overcome the wiles of the enemy, dear God. Dear God, we lift up our government officials to you right now, dear God. We ask, dear God, that they would just come to you, dear God, that they would just kneel before you, that they would just pray to you, that they would just seek your face as far as the guidance, dear God, that is needed for our world, not just the country of the United States, but our world going forth. We pray a special prayer for each teacher, Heavenly Father, each child, dear God, that are going back into the classrooms, dear God, and even those who are not going back, who parents and children have decided and elected to just do virtual learning, dear God. We know that this may be difficult during this time. We, we ask that you would just be in the midst, dear God. We ask, dear God, that you would just keep us from having a defeated mentality, that we would just look at this thing and tackle it day by day, dear God. We're asking for prayer and coverage, dear God, for all of the teachers, because we know that sometimes this can be a difficult time for them and the school administrators, the principals, dear God, the superintendents, but we ask that they would just turn to you to seek wisdom and guidance as to what it is that needs to be done, Heavenly Father. Dear God, the steps that need to be taken, dear God. And we ask, dear God, that each school be covered, dear God. Each school system be covered. Each child be covered. Each teacher, superintendent, and school administrator, each bus driver, Heavenly Father. We lift everyone up to you, dear God. We ask, dear God, as only we know how, dear God, that this coronavirus be eradicated, dear God. Dear God, that it would just be wiped if we need to turn from our wicked ways, dear God. Drop that in our spirit, Heavenly Father, so that a way we can just fall on our knees to you, dear God, and we could cry out and ask for forgiveness, dear God. We are coming right now just to intercede on the behalf of those who may not even know how, dear God, just asking that you will forgive us of our sins, dear God. Anything that we may have been done wrong, that is against you, dear God. We pray right now for KRG and radio station. We ask that you would just continue to bless it even the more, Heavenly Father. We ask that you would just continue to allow your words to be ministered over the airways around the world. Dear God, we thank you for what you are doing at this radio station, dear God. We thank you that the word is gone global, Heavenly Father, something that we may have not even thought possible to happen. Dear God, we pray for this show on today, dear God, that me and my husband would minister words of encouragement, Heavenly Father, that you would speak through us, dear God, because it's not about the kings, dear God. So less of us and more of you, Heavenly Father. We ask that a word will be spoken that would just incite a spark and a shift inside marriages around the world, dear God. We thank you for everything that you have done and everything that you are going to do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And our KRGN disclaimer, views expressed on this show are those of the host, 
guests, and callers and are not necessarily those of KRGN 98.5 FM, its management, or other advertisers. KRGN 98.5 FM holds no responsibility for the validity or accuracy of information on this show. And also, please keep in mind that although we are counseling professionals, the information shared on our radio show is for ministry educational purposes only. Also note that topics discussed are reflective of supporters who contact us desiring to have a deeper knowledge of these topics. No information is shared on our show based upon our counseling experiences. Topics are for the encouragement of marriages, families, and communities as God desire for us to minister. And our motto here on Marriage Mondays with the Kings is helping to build stronger marriages, which leads to stronger families and stronger communities. And our foundational scripture for our show comes from the book of Matthew, chapter 19, verse 6, where it reads, So they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no one separate. And then moving forward also, we just want to go ahead and jump off into our announcements. Uh Really like to thank those individuals that support Marriage Mondays with the Kings. Mm -hmm. So we want to start off in Colleen, Texas, and send a big shout out to Danielle Belcher. So, Danielle, thank you so much for being a supporter. Also to James Pinchbeck of Wade, North Carolina. James, thank you for your support as well. And then all the way over in Rhodes, Greece, we have Vasilis Spiropolis. I hope I said that right. Mm -hmm. Uh, Vasilis Spiropolis in Rhodes, Greece. So thank you so much for being a supporter and listening in uh, to Marriage Mondays with the Kings, but not only um, to our particular show, but also to all of the other radio personalities, the shows that they bring forth, uh, to all the other supporters that no matter which way you support us in, we just want to thank you and ask for your uh, continued support. Also, uh, we want to send some shout-outs for our anniversaries. Everyone knows we love to celebrate anniversaries here on Marriage Mondays with the Kings. So we want to send our first shout-out to Eldon and Carolyn Rowland of Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, celebrated six years on the 26th of July. Six years on the 26th of July. Congratulations, guys. And then also to Andre and Lisa Charity of Atlanta, Georgia. They celebrated eight years on the 27th. All right. And so just want to send a big shout out to those two couples, but not only them, any and everyone who was celebrating the anniversary. We just want to say happy anniversary to you, and we pray that God continues to bless you with many more to come. Amen, amen. And so we just want to let you know, um, just kind of in our little announcements before we dive into the show, that there are some things that are coming about, some changes. And so one of those would happen to be we are going to start going live every third Monday as God see fit right here on Marriage Mondays with the Kings. And so with that being said, um, we, this month, August the 17th at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time, we are inviting young adults to partake in the show as we get an understanding of how young adults see marriage. And so that will take place. We will be going live from our YouTube page and also Marriage Mondays with the Kings Facebook page. We'll give you more information at the end. And that will be again on August the 17th at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. So mark your calendars. We are also encouraging everyone. We do know we see now we are already in the month of August. With that being said, We need everyone right now to be proactive, to Mm -hmm. get out, to register, to vote. Because one of the things that we see a lot on social media is a lot of grown folks that are arguing back and forth, trying to express strongly their opinions and their, you know, points on what need to be done right here in the United States. Well, since you are so strongly pressed in Mm -hmm. doing that, we encourage you to register to vote. What were you going to say, baby? I'm just saying a lot of individuals are just, you know, very strongly opinionated. And it's nothing wrong with that. You know, expressing your views, expressing how you feel about things. But one of the best ways you can do that is by exercising your right to vote. That's true. Uh, For a lot of individuals in in, in history, African-Americans have not been given that opportunity uh, to vote. And we've had individuals who have gone before us, who have died, who have fought in, in many different ways. They've been beaten Uh, treated um, very inhumanely Mm -hmm. uh, for us to be able to have that right. And now that we have that right, you know, it would just 
leave me bewildered for us to have people die for us to, to be able to exercise a, ro- a right that is given to us and then not go out and vote. That's true. You know, you may feel that your vote doesn't count. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm just one of those individuals I like to shoot it straight. If your vote didn't count, then they wouldn't be trying to keep individuals from voting. That's true. So exercise your right. Let your voice be heard. Mm-hmm. And at the same time, even though we're asking you to exercise your right to vote, we're going to tell you to exercise your right to pray. Amen. Pray that God will put individuals into position and into power that is going to make a difference and, and make this world a better place uh, for us to to live in and for mm-hmm. our children and for mm-hmm. our grandchildren uh, farther down the line. So please take heed, not just to the words that are coming from our mouth, yes. but take it from what God is saying. Take it from what's going on in the world. In order to make a difference, you have to be a difference. So that please exercise that right to vote. That is so true. And we also encourage you to go ahead and kind of study the candidates, what you yes, agree with, with definitely. what they're saying and what they're not. Because what a lot of people are doing right now is they're going by what they see on um, social media Mm -hmm. and what they see in the news. uh, Please do not allow media or someone else to stray your vote or sway it one way or the other. And so again, we encourage you because Tuesday, November the 3rd, we'll be here before you know it. Mm -hmm. So KRGN is a 100% listener supported radio station. And with that being said, we ask that you just continue to share the word about KRGN with others. You can, they, KRGN has an app. It's Royal Blue and White. Go to your app store and type in KRGN, hit the space sign, FM. And when you do, that Royal Blue and White app will come up. Or you can also listen live to KRGN. Some of us, um, you know, people who have jobs, you are allowed to do your job and you can listen to music or whatever. But if you need some inspiration, you can do that at www.mykrgn.com. That's how you can listen live and stay connected. So moving on, we will want to show love to those of KRG in 98.5 FM, we'd like to thank the spiritual overseers, radio show owners and managers, all the radio personalities, volunteers, and those who sow financially into KRG in, as well as keeping KRG in, in your prayers. Remember to download the KRG in app so you can stay connected and keep it locked 24 hours a day. And so we just want to just tell you guys a little bit about last week's show, which was entitled Marriage is to be Honored. Uh, So don't want to spend a whole bunch of time uh, there. But, you know, if you want to catch up with us on that, uh, just, you know, jump over to our uh, Internet address, www.marriagemondayswiththekings.com. Check out that particular show. We had a really good time uh, being able to bring forth some word in reference to that. The biggest thing that I know that I got out of that for marriage is to be honored is that you got to be able to honor your marriage and, and expect other individuals to uh, to honor it so that uh, you show people what right looks like. Mm-hmm. If, if you honor your marriage and you expect that from other individuals, it may be a little bit easier for other individuals to say, yeah, marriage is something uh, that should be honored, even Uh, looking at the Word of God and what it says. But once again, you can check out not only that uh, particular show, but all of our shows on www.marriagemondayswiththekings.com. And so today's topic, we are going to be discussing how to get the spark back. And when we say the spark back, we are talking about in your marriage. Again, how to get the spark back. And our question of the week is, what are some ways that couples can get the spark back in their marriage? Hmm. So we do, as we always do, we kind of put the question of the week out. We put it out so individuals can give uh, feedback on the things that, you know, they do. And I want to say we put this out on It was put out on our Facebook page, on our Instagram page, and it was also put out on our YouTube channel. But the thing is, ironically, which is kind of ironic for us, we did not receive any responses back in reference to this topic. Usually, it's heavy, loaded responses, but for some reason, we did not. So, guess what? Me and the king is going to go ahead and we're going to continue to go forth. And so, I'm going to say this. I want us that are married couples to look at this. Those who are engaged, those who are single, keep this in mind as well. 
when we first get married, and it, it generally happens to everyone, of course, there's an excitement. I know for me being a wife, you know, I was so happy to number one, have my wedding ring on and no, you know, I'm not one that have to have all this elaborate, no, but just to, to, to have made that commitment to my husband. And so I had my wedding ring on. I got to say, oh, my husband, my husband, it was so new and it was so amazing. But see, this is the thing right here. When we get married, we start building our career. We start building our family, you know, and different things like that. And to be honest, what I have seen, and this is just me speaking, um, I'm sure my husband may have seen as well, is that couples who have been married like 15 plus years, I'm going to say maybe even 10 plus years, you fall, we begin to fall into a mundane routine, if you will, because we are trying to maintain things at work. We're trying to maintain things at church. We're trying to maintain our family, support our children, make sure that we are present for them. And a lot of the times, if we be honest, the marriage is kind of placed on the back burner. And so we fall into a place of complacency. And this is like one of the most common ways that I have seen marriages lose their spark. Now, me and my husband have been sharing with you all for the past four years, our ups and downs of our marriage. And so as we're going through with this show, we ask that you just think within yourself, it, husband and wife, if you both are listening, grab a notebook, a piece of paper, and each of you have a piece of paper and jot down um, some of the ways that you think that the spark may have been lost in your marriage. And then you two discuss it once the show is over together, just in some isolated, quiet time, discuss it so we can switch this thing back around. That's good. Um, one of the things that I was jotting down as we were uh, preparing for this particular show, uh, you know, how to put the spark back in, in your marriage uh, and in your relationship. For me, I think one of the key answers is to don't lose sight of what sparked you in the first place. Mm, that's you good. know, it's like my wife was, was saying, you know, uh, there was something that struck you about your husband. There was something that struck you about your wife. There was something about maybe commonalities that you both had. And over time, like my wife was saying, you know, we tend to lose sight of that. Mm -hmm. So don't lose sight of it. Look, go back and take a look at what occurred in the first place that uh, made you feel that, hey, I love that woman or that's going to be my wife or, you know, I love that man. I'm going to make him my husband, whatever the case may be. Mm -hmm. Go back and take a look at that and don't lose sight of that. Mm -hmm. uh, all too often, we will put our marriage on the back burner. And what we have to understand is that our marriage is our first ministry. That's true. Before mm -hmm. we do any other ministry, we need to be ministering to ourselves. And sometimes we get so caught up in everything else mm -hmm. that we forget to put things back into our own uh, relationship. Mm -hmm. And and don't get me wrong, my wife and I are big helpers. You know, we will do anything to try to help anybody if we can. But there even came times in our relationship when we had to realize that we need to pump the brakes yes. and, and start refilling our cup because we were putting so much out. Mm -hmm. And it's my belief that a lot of individuals really just start to lose that spark or, and that flame is because we start putting enough fuel on someone else's fire that we forget about our own. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And our fire has to be able to to uh, continue to burn. When your fire burns out, you can't cook. You can't keep warm. You can't ward off uh, individuals that may be uh, a threat or animals that may be a threat. If you look at it you know, from like a camping or a survival point of view, fire is very important. So in order to have that fire, you got to keep that spark going. Mm -hmm. And so uh, the, the second thing that I kind of wanted to bring out, and I think this is so important that, you know, after don't lose sight of what you need to do and you need to make sure you keep your marriage first, you have to communicate your wants and your needs. That's true. You know, uh, a fire tells you when it's about to go out mm -hmm. because it starts to get dim. Mm -hmm. It starts to smoke a lot sometimes. Uh, and so when you see that your relationship might be getting dim or there's some smoke uh, that's being... Uh, show the set for, for the flames, you may need to put some more wood back on that fire in order to rekindle it a little bit. Mm -hmm. And so communicating that relationship-wise is a way to do that. Baby, you know, it's been a long time since we went out on a date. Mm -hmm. You know, why don't you open the door for me anymore? Mm -hmm. Baby, you know, I'm not saying you got to do this all the time, but, you know, I used to come home and you would just, like, have the the food just about to jump out the um, the pot, out the skillet, and right to my plate. You wanted me to have it hot when I came home, mm -hmm. you know, and just talk about those things. 
all those things like that can, you know, help uh, bring a spark back because it shows, you know, I'm paying attention to you. I care. I, I hear what you're saying. Mm-hmm. And communicating your wants and needs to an individual is going to be key to that. Now, on the flip side of that, when a person communicates that, you got to be ready to listen. That's true. Yeah. You got to be ready to listen because they're trying to tell something to you, uh, communicate how they're feeling. And so don't shut them down in that because they need to express that and you need to be able to understand that so it's beneficial for both parties. That is true. And so, you know, I was sitting up thinking as we was preparing for the show, like, how does this happen? Because what I hear a lot of, of us married couples say is, you know, we'll set up and we'll ask ourselves, how do we even get to this place? We used to be so happy. We used to be so loving. We used to always, when we went places, we would hold each other's hands. And we know for those of us who have served in the military, you know, you don't have PDA. And that's one of the regulations or whatever. But now that you're no longer in or when you're in civilian clothes with your honey and some of those, you know, you military, you can pick up on this. The little things like holding each other's hands or whatever it is that you used to do in the beginning. So in my mind, I was like, how does this happen? So I had jotted down some things as to how it happens. And so as you husband and wife are taking your own notes and you're thinking to yourself, ask yourself, what have I stopped doing as a husband that I used to do? Wives, ask yourself, What did I stop doing? Then I want you to think about this. Husband and wife individually almost feel like we're having a like a counseling session, a group counseling session. But ask yourself this, you know, what is it that I need to get back to doing or what is it that I, I do for my spouse, but they don't appreciate it. So I stop doing it. Um, but but this is the thing. Do not. Um, forget to set aside dedicated time to communicate with each other. Mm -hmm. Now, let me tell you one of the biggest things, and it gets under my skin. Y'all know me. I'm just going to keep it all the way real. This is one of the biggest things that I always hear husbands and wives say. I don't have the time to set aside to talk and communicate with my, my wife, or I don't have the time because I'm so busy to stop and communicate with my husband. See, this reminds me, uh-oh, and I think I'm about to do a little country analogy like my husband doing his analogies. But, but let me ask you this. So that nice vehicle that you got sitting in the driveway, if you don't make time to ensure that the oil is changed, Mm -hmm. if you don't make time to make sure that the uh, uh, transmission fluid is enough up in there. See, I know a little bit of what I'm talking about because, you know, when I was a kid, my grandfather, my late papa used to work on vehicles. What's going to happen? If you don't put the oil that needs to be put in the vehicle, what's going to happen to that engine? If you don't put the transmission in anybody who knows almost anything any minute thing about vehicles, if the engine or the transmission is shot, I don't care if you pay the money to replace it, it's shot. It yeah. will never be the same as it was before. Mm-hmm. So how can you set up here? Because, see, I don't want your husband or your wife in this time to say this. We're trying to, you know, help y'all build up the, the, the resilience, if you will, to be able to effectively communicate. So, and y'all don't be throwing them little eyes at each other too, either because that's not going to help the situation. But this is my question that I'm going to ask. How is it that you cannot set aside dedicated time to communicate with your husband or your wife and you state, because I'm too busy, that's the nice excuse that you give, the biggest excuse between mm-hmm. married couples, yet in still you can attend that meeting at work that dedicated meeting at work you can attend even via zoom right now as we're in the midst of the pandemic if they call a church meeting guess who gonna be there Mm -hmm. and i have to be there baby you don't understand because i'm a leader in the church well let let me let me kind of say something sir husband yeah you have to and you must set aside dedicated time to communicate effectively with your spouse because you're the leader of the home Uh, a wife you have to to, and you must set aside that dedicated time because guess what? You are his wife. You are the one when I think about um Aaron and Er, er and Moses, I know that country mm-hmm. just came out. They held up Moses' hand. How are we supposed to know if to hold up our husband's arms and help keep them reinforce the strength in our marriage if we don't have time because we're quote unquote too busy? But you sure can get with your girlfriends and you sure can talk with your homeboys, but you don't have time, right? Okay. Yeah, that's a good one. And and another thing, I, I just wanted to bring it out here. Matthew, the fifth chapter, the 14th through the 16th verse. You are the light of the world. Mm-hmm. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Mm-hmm. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Mm-hmm. Instead, 
they put it on its stand, and it gives light to everyone in the house. Mm -hmm. In the same way, let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Mm -hmm. And so if you go back to this spark, there was a spark that had to light that candle. Come on. So your marriage can be that candle that's in the middle of a room that's there for everyone else to see. Mm -hmm. your, your light, that spark may be the thing that keeps someone else from being in darkness. That's true. You have to understand that your light and you letting that shine, keeping that spark in your marriage can wean off darkness. Mm. See, you have to understand, you take a, a, a match and a match box, stand in a dark room. The minute you strike that and it lights up, darkness starts to go away. Mm -hmm. But all too often, we will let darkness consume us instead of shining our light the way it's supposed to be. Yeah. In order for you to do that, you have to be a spark. You have to have a spark in your relationship. Mm -hmm. And so in doing so, sometimes we have to do something different. My wife alluded, uh, alluded to it a little moment ago. We can't keep doing the same thing over and over and over again. Everything just being mundane, the same old, same old. Break your routine. Mm -hmm. Do something different. You know, maybe step out on some faith and say, hey, let's, let's work on a hobby together. Maybe let's start a business or let's do some volunteer work. Uh, gr grab the kids together. Let's go camping or hiking. Do something different so that you see something different in your eyes. Because when you keep doing the same thing, seeing it over and over again, a lot of times that's when people start to lose focus. That's true. Because you're only seeing what you're used to seeing. Mm -hmm. A lot of times we, we uh, kind of take advantage of the situation and... We don't spend as much time with the individual um, just for the simple fact that we think it's the same old, same old. Yeah. So we need to be able to do some different things in our lives, uh, in our relationships that may spark something else. Mm -hmm. You know, you going hiking may spark going camping. That's true. That's meaning you're spending more time together. When you're out there in the middle of the woods somewhere by a lake and you ain't got the hustle or bustle of a job going on and mm -hmm. stuff with kids at school and, you know, sometimes even, you know, back and forth in church, sometimes that frees your mind so that you can solely concentrate on your marriage, mm -hmm. on your first ministry. Mm -hmm. And so with that, you know, sometimes... It's not a bad thing. Sometimes you got to stop focusing on other individuals to focus on Call yourself. on somebody. Yes. Focus on yourself sometimes. Sometimes you have to even break away from your spouse to get yourself straight and then come back together so y'all can work on each other mm -hmm. um, to collectively as a team. Yeah. Uh, the, the next thing I'm going to give you here, and then I'm going to uh, kind of turn it back over to my wife, is that sometimes you lose that spark because both of y'all are busy putting each other out. Ooh, come on. That lines up what I'm about to say. Come on. Y'all just sit there and y'all fight with each other. Yes. You got negative things that you're saying about each other all the time. And so instead of helping a person shine, you're putting the light out. Mm -hmm. So if you put your light out on your husband, how is the relationship going to shine? Come on. If come you put on. the light out on your wife, how is that going to shine? Mm -hmm. Well, I'm going to tell you what some of y'all are known to be true is probably going through your head right now. Some of y'all are feeding too much light into other individuals instead of your spouse. Yes, that is so true. And it's something that my husband just said that because I promise, baby, I had that wrote down where, um, and in case you all don't know what me and my husband do to prepare for the show, God ministered to my husband what to say. He ministers to me what to say. And it, of course, because we're one, we kind of bounce off each other, of course. So under the, how does this happen? How do we get to the place where we are, where our spark is barely flickering or almost out, if not out? We stop telling and showing each other how much we mean to each other. Mm -hmm. Because one of the biggest things that I'm hearing right now, and this is just talking to, you know, friends and family or whatever the case may be. You may tell your spouse, well, I tell them I love them. Well, I tell them, you know, they sexy or I tell them, you know, whatever. But what do you show? What do you show? And so I'm a, I'm a, my husband don't even notice, but I was talking to one of my good sister friends, good, good sister friend. And we were laughing because on our personal Facebook page, I had made, you know, kind of like a little joke or whatever, because my husband, he showed up with roses and you know he had Reese's which I love Reese's and you know he had one of my favorite wines yes I do drink wine and I am saving so you know sold out I don't have to justify that so anywho with that being said 
I was just looking at him and I was like, what? like my heart was overjoyed that he showed up. And he do, he'll show up from time to time with a um, a snicker bar or whatever. It's the little things that make me happy. And so he is showing me as well as him telling me how much I mean to him. But see, but this is the problem right here. Instead of us as husbands and wives and ask yourself, are you guilty? What you're doing right now is you're trading insults. And you're hurting. And this is something that I shared with someone probably in the past week and a half. And it's known to be true. And it's very sad. Is that people will spend their time, husbands and wives will spend their time. You hurt the ones that's closest to you instead of having a grown-up conversations with the ones that have offended you. Meaning somebody can get on your your uh, nerves at the job and instead of you, because maybe you don't feel like you could have a conversation with that individual because they always coming at you or getting a supervisor and job, you know, involved or a mediator. What you do is you hold that anger in. And when you come home, guess who you unleash it on? Mm -hmm. You unleash it on your wife. You unleash it on your husband or you unleash it on your kids. And they didn't do anything to you. And it's a lot of people right now, husband and wife, we know this time that we're in, we got to get through it. But a lot of husbands and wives are holding in a lot of anger and you letting it out on your spouse instead of effectively communicating it to the individual who made you mad in the first place. Yeah. So stop taking your anger out on those who are closest to you because what we tell ourselves in our mind is, oh, that's my husband or oh, that's my wife or that's my kids. They're going to always be there for, for me. Well, guess what? A hit dog do not like to always continually be beat. Because mm -hmm. they're going to do one or two things. And my husband taught me this. They're either going to snap back on your tail, they're going to bite you back, or they're going to leave. And you can't blame them for leaving when you're always coming at them aggressively for what other people did. Now, I'm going to say this because I'm really guilty of this. How does this happen? How do we get to this place of the, this part? I remember, because y'all know we're transparent. That my husband used to always tell me, and I'm not going to put it out there, you know, because I'm smart, but it's, you know, it's things about husbands and wives that we love to see um, physically, if you will. I love to see, you know, maybe a, a specific body part of my husband's. I'd be like, okay, you know what I'm saying? Look at them legs, okay? Mr. King, you working on them abs? Or, okay, I see you, your arms. They're forming from the push-ups or lifting weights or whatever that you're doing. So anyhow, anyhow, my husband used to always ask me to wear certain outfits. And I'm going to be honest with you. And we was uh, at this time attending this particular church. And he's like, well, baby, why don't you wear this skirt? Baby, I like you, you know, when you put this on or whatever, this dress or whatever. And I would, I would like skirt around it and not wear it. And whatever the case may be. And he would ask and ask. And in my mind, I was too busy worried about what everybody else thought about me. What would the church people say if they seen me? And it wasn't like he was asking me to wear, you know, no mini skirt that was extremely revealing or whatever the case may be. Because he would never ask us to do that because I am a mother. I have sons. You know what I'm saying? I have a, I have daughters that look up to me. So I'm not going to be out here looking like I'm dressing like a teeny bopper. No, I dress with class. But I was too busy worried about what the fellow church members thought about me. Oh, well, if they see me, what I have to hide, what I have to, you know, whatever the case may be when I was all the way out of order because my husband asked, and I'm going to tell you what it did. He stopped asking. He stopped asking. And one of our heated exchanges, he told me that I used to ask you this all the time because I like to see you in this. I'm not worried about what nobody else think about seeing you in this, but I am your husband. And I was too busy because I had this title in the church and oh, da, 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 da. And I was out of order because our my first ministry is to my husband, to my home. And so a lot of people right now, your marriage of spark is out because of that very reason. But let me tell you, if Mr. King, especially if I can still fit it down, because some stuff I ain't going to lie, I can't, it's kind of snug or whatever, but I'm purposing to do better. But if my honey asked me to, you know what I'm saying? I dress up for him. How many of y'all wives dress up for your husband? I understand we may be feeling, oh, well, I'm big and oh, I done put on this this weight since I didn't had this baby, whatever, but baby, get you some clothes that'll fit the weight that you have and try to be as sexy as you can for your husband. And that's what I had to learn. And a lot of us, we just throw it away because we beat ourselves up because we want to look like a Coke bottle, a 36, 24, 36, baby, we mature and time goes along. 
And so I just started learning how to wear clothes that I would think would be, you know, nice. If me and my husband, even now, I got to get better and get, you know, back to it. But we might take a car ride. We don't do a lot of stuff because of the Rona, but sometimes we want to get out. We may take a car ride. We may go park by the lake or maybe go to a park where it's not a lot of people and stuff like that. Ask yourself, wives, what can you do better? Let us stop making excuses because we know that men, God made them to be physical. Okay, we are emotional. Men are more attracted by what they see. What are you allowing your husband to attract when it comes to you? Mm, that's good. And, you know, I just want to kind of piggyback off something that my wife said there. Uh, and, and there's nothing wrong. You know, the, everybody comes in different shapes and sizes. You know, we're not picking on anyone uh, for being small or if some individuals may consider themselves overweight or whatever. Uh, but this is what I, I just dropped this in my, in my spirit mm-hmm. is... When you think about it, when guys say, oh, you know, this girl got a coat bottle figure, this, mm-hmm. that, this, that, another, nothing wrong with that once again. But you got to understand, wine is more expensive than coat. Look at the different shapes of the different, different, oh, many different oh, wine so bottles right. that are out there. And when you think about it, the longer wine sits, mm. the better it's supposed to be. The longer, a, the longer a Coke sits, it fizzles out. It goes flat. Oh, my God. So just think about mm, that. But mm. going on with that, you know, my wife and I are always pretty much on the same wavelength with each other. And, you know, when she was talking about dressing up, yeah, you have to dress up sometimes. And sometimes it's not just for your spouse, if you will. It's for yourself. Mm-hmm. So you yeah. can build that self-esteem. You know, sometimes you may think you couldn't get back in an old dress or a pair of pants or something you used to wear. And actually, you can. Mm-hmm. So when you dress up, maybe you should just go ahead and just take it on to the next level and go out on a date. Yeah. That thing that we preach all the time, all date the time. nights. That mm-hmm. is a way to spark, I put that spark back in your relationship. Mm-hmm. And then the last thing I'll tell you is go ahead, since you're going to date, since you're going to dress up, go ahead and take that uh, stroll down memory lane. Yes. Remembering some of the things that you guys used to do. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe even doing something that you used to do. Talk about those things. Baby, I remember when I first saw you, blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. You had this on. I, I can sit here right now and tell you, uh, I'm King. talking about Ms. from. King. <laughs> From top to bottom, left to right, everything that my wife had on the first time that I saw her. Mm-hmm. And sometimes I know when I talk to her about that, she blushes, she laughs, but I know that that does something for her in a positive way. Mm-hmm. So sometimes you got to take those uh, trips down memory lane about that first date that you went on. That's true. Uh, the first time that maybe, you know, you showed up at... Um, at her house and mom and dad was there. Mm-hmm. Uh, the first time you guys went to a game together, you know, the first time you went riding horses or whatever. Yeah. If you remember those feelings that you had then, you can bring those back. That can help put that spark back into uh, your relationship. That is true. Um, the other thing I want to tell you is this. You know, my wife is speaking on as well, acts of kindness. Some of the things that you do just out of, outside of your norm, just out of nowhere for no apparent reason says a lot to an individual. Mm-hmm. Yes, I brought my wife roses and some candy and, and a bottle of wine that I know that she liked. You know, for you, it may be cooking dinner when your wife, you know, thought that she was going to have to come home and, and do it. Mm-hmm. You know, maybe uh, she washes the clothes, but this time you decide to do it and fold them and put them up or clean the house. Yeah. Little things like that sometimes can spark um, your relationship again because it's showing that you care for that individual, that you're willing to do a service for them. It's an act of servitude, an act of kindness. Mm -hmm. Uh, Candlelight dinners. Uh, If you want to go out and do an outing, if you want to go out uh, to the countryside and pack some food up and go out there and just eat lunch on on the countryside Mm -hmm. and enjoy the scenery and be able to talk to each other, that's a way that you can put a spark back into your relationship. And then the last thing I'm going to say here again before I uh, pass it back over to my wife, be friends again. Yes, remember that. Be friends again. Yes, you're married, you're husband and wife, you got the ring on the finger, but can you just go back to being like it used to be, you know, for some individuals when you could just talk freely? Mm -hmm. Any conversation, a topic can come up and you can talk about it without causing offense. You listen to each other's viewpoints. Maybe you get a better understanding of something. Maybe you learn something from uh, that individual. But just being friends again Mm -hmm. and enjoying each other uh, like you used to. 
So that those are some of the things that we're you know throwing out there that's pretty much answering the question of the day. But I, t- I tend to believe that sometimes we lose sight of that. We get that title of husband and wife so ingrained in us that we just forget that we're supposed to be each other's best friends. That's true. That and is if so you think true. about how your best friend is and some of the things that you can do with your best friend and um, how that person is there for you and you're there for them, it, it should be easy to do that with your spouse. Mm-hmm. But don't lose sight of that because when you lose sight, you can't see. If you can't see, how do you know where you're going when you're trying to walk out that vision that God has given you for you and your family? Yeah. Wow. And, you know, as you were sitting up talking, I was thinking about this because I remember it was a place in our marriage where we fell into this. I want to ask the husbands and wives, when is the last time you laughed together? Yeah. When is the last time? Because, I mean... Me and my husband were going so much, and it's something because people used to ask us to the point where I couldn't even answer, how do you all do it? Because we were, oh, my God, in church, we had two businesses. We we were both working, you know, government jobs and going to school, and we had our children and in the church. And when I sit back and think, I'm like, Lord, how in the world did we even have the strength to even do it? But because we were so busy trying to take care of everyone and everything else, we lost sight of ourselves. And so that's where all that arguing came in and that negative talk. And we were trading more insults back and forth at each other instead of um, speaking. You know what I'm saying? How much we mean to each other, as I was just saying a few minutes ago. And so how did we get to this place? How did this happen? Lack of intimacy, both sexually and not. Mm. Now, that is one of the biggest things besides comprehension, communicating comprehension and understanding. Well, I'm going to say this is the second biggest thing is lack of intimacy because a lot of, I'm going to be real, y'all know me, a lot of couples are not having sex. Mm -hmm. you just not. You don't want to. You're not turned on. You don't feel like it, whatever the case may be. But... A lot of intimacy, non-sexual intimacy is lacking as well. Mm -hmm. And so an example of non-sexual intimacy could be, because right now we locked down because of the Rona. Let me tell you right now, me and Mr. King know we don't watch TV and, you know, movies all the time. But if we catch on to a good series, oh, we be hooked into that thing. And so me and my husband may lay in the bed and watch TV. You know what I'm saying? Um, If we're in the living room watching that same series or whatever, my husband may lay in my lap or I may lay in his lap or he may put his arm around me. That is non-sexual intimacy. We are connecting on an intimate level by spending time with each other. It is the little things. What is the the little leaven that ruined the whole road? That's a scripture in Mm -hmm. the Old Testament. It's the, 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 the little foxes that ruined the vine. That scripture is well paraphrasing. And so it's the little things that you stop doing in your marriage Mm -hmm. a lot of times in marriage because again we know the man is physical the man gonna want sex but it's a lot of 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 sisters a lot of women that i'm hearing and wives they're like i don't want it because that's all he think about is sex well husband if all you think about is sex what are you doing intimately to you know non-sexual concerning your wife because one of the things that i heard oh my god it made it was some years ago i don't know if we were in germany the, the last time or even before we had got stationed in germany but i heard that in order for you in order for you two to make love the husband want to make love with his wife he needs to first make love to her mind See, that's deep. Mm -hmm. That's deep right there. That's so deep. Some of y'all going to say, what you just say again? Say that one more time. In order for the husband to want to make love to his wife, he needs to learn to make love to her mind. And so I seen something in a study, and I can't quote it right now, but what it says is a man will get turned on instantly. The husband will get turned on instantly by more so what he sees. But it takes the wife sometimes up to 24 hours in advance to get turned on, you know, uh, emotionally, mentally in order for it to lead to the physical. Mm -hmm. And so ask yourself, is that some of the case? Have y'all even talked about the non-intimacy and the sexual intimacy intimacy that is lacking in your marriage at this time. Wow, that's good. That that was deep there. Um, I'm going to go ahead and hit this one up real quick. Okay. Um, You know, a lot of our sparks have been lost in our relationships because we're too busy with that phone. Oh, right. We need to learn how to do an Erica Badu and put the phone down. (laughs) All right. Some of us have lost that 
uh, spark there because we're paying too much attention to what's on that phone. Everyone's on Instagram, Facebook, mm-hmm. and I'm not saying anything is wrong with those social medias, but when you start putting more attention into that than you do into your relationship, you find out where your spark really is. Yeah. Every time that phone light up from a text message and you jump for it, uh, mm. like like you just uh, you know dropped your wallet or something. Yeah. You know there there's an issue with that when you become hooked on that and you're not hooked on your spouse. It's addicting. Yeah, it's addicting. There's something that's wrong with that. Mm-hmm. And so you know there's a lot of individuals I, I've seen it with well, uh, different people you know around the workplace just being out in public. You would get an individual that would get in a car and drive eight, nine hours somewhere, and they're on their phone the whole time, and that's yes. the perfect time for y'all to be having a conversation. Mm-hmm. It's true. You know, for for some of y'all, um, you mess around and go off and leave the diaper bag and say, oh, you know what, we'll just pick up one on the way. We'll be all right. But you leave your phone, you'll turn around two hours and drive back that's because true. you're so addicted to that. Mm-hmm. What is in that phone? that is more important in your relationship. Mm. And I understand phones are good things. You know, you can hold a lot of data and information in it. Uh, you can make emergency calls whenever you need. You know, I, I got that. But sometimes we're too ingrained in those t- uh, cell phones and in social media. We need to put that stuff down for a moment. That's true. And and concentrate on what's really important. Because mm-hmm. I would hate to see a relationship go under because of social media. Yes, that's not going to be there for you when you all by yourself. Right. And so <laughs> the, the thing that I, I tell you in order for you to have a fire. So, you know, we're saying you're going to put the spark back in your relationship. Mm-hmm. But, you know, you don't just want to keep it with a spark. You want that spark to ignite to something that leads to a fire. Mm-hmm. Because a fire can bring protection. A fire can bring warmth. A fire can provide you with being able to cook. So, in order for you to have a fire, you got to have three things. Mm-hmm. you got to have oxygen, heat, and a fuel source. Mm-hmm. If either one of those three things is missing... You can't get that fire. Mm -hmm. You can spark all day long. Mm -hmm. You won't have a fire. So what I need individuals to do is to keep that oxygen flowing in your relationship. Mm -hmm. I need you to keep some heat going about so that way when that fuel source is there, that spark is going to produce more than just a spark. It's going to probably ignite a wildfire. Mm -hmm. And some of us need that light. Uh, the that light to be shined again, that spark to pop up again, so that we can have a wildfire in our relationship. Mm -hmm. See, I grew up. Um, I grew up um, in the Boy Scouts. Spent a lot of time. I want to say probably from the age of eight all the way to about sixteen or seventeen in Boy Scouts, and we did a lot of camping. And one of the most important things that you would have to have when you were camping was a fire. Mm-hmm. You had to learn how to make a fire. Uh, either using we would use matches sometimes, just being honest. But we had flint and steel, and then we had that little bow thing that we would use. Mm-hmm. And a lot of times, what you have to understand is, in order to get that bow thing to really go in, you had to be able to produce some smoke that would start burning there to get the kindling started. And then once the kindling started, you would blow on it a little bit, and then you would move it over to something that was a little bigger that was able to catch fire. And now you got you a good fire. Mm-hmm. And and the the thing behind any fire that you start, you have to start. Smoking small yeah you can't you don't go out there and chop down a tree and stack it up and light it you start with some small pieces of wood get that kindling burning and then you add on to it i'm Mm -hmm. saying that for a specific reason some of our uh sparks have been lost and we can't get that fire back in our relationship because we're too much worried about the big stuff instead of the little stuff that my wife was saying before Mm -hmm. we're too much worried about how am i gonna get this next mercedes and how am i gonna get this big house on the hill instead of worry about how do i keep my wife knowing that uh i'm attracted to come on somebody Mm -mm -mm. we need to start small and let the fire branch out if Mm -hmm. you work on those small things the bigger things are gonna come that's true you know uh, a bonfire People will look at that and say, oh, my God, that was beautiful. I wonder how they got that started. It didn't start with all that wood and stuff up there. It was something that was underneath that was lit Mm -hmm. that was able to light up everything else. So ask yourself the question, what small thing needs to be lit under you so that you can set fire to something else? Mm -hmm. And so I know, too, I jotted down some things about how can you turn this around, you know, when your spark is almost out. The top thing that I put is before you have a real serious conversation, before you really start to pour out and share your heart with your husband or your wife, that very thing where you're like, oh, I want to talk to him about this, but if I do, he going to go off and act a fool. Oh, I want to tell her that, but then if I do, she going to act crazy and get upset. This is what I encourage you to do. Grab your honey's hand, and I encourage you to pray. 
before mm-hmm. you even start speaking, go before yep. God, pray that God would lead the conversation, invite God into the conversation, and that will help keep you mindful to, to not to slang insults, but then to actually effectively communicate. Number two, I'm going to say swallow your pride and admit to your spouse that you were wrong. A lot of reasons why marriages are not working right now is because you will not come out as husband and or wife and admit that you are wrong because of that ugly word because um, called pride. Even the word of God says pride come before a fall. And so if you don't want your marriage to fall, you need to go ahead and get rid of that pride. Number three, actually listen to each other and how each other feel. Nothing dampens the spark more than a husband or a wife trying to make the effort to talk to their spouse their spouse not listen, but soon as somebody else outside the marriage talk, your mama talk, your daddy talk, your brother, your sister, your pastor, your supervisor, oh, you can make time to listen to them. You can make time to listen to something that you didn't seen on YouTube that's 45 minutes of nonsense. You can make time to listen to a Facebook Live that is not adding any content to the being of your marriage, but you can never take time to listen to your spouse's heart. And then I'm going to say this, be intentional. This, I think, is going to carry myself. I was just having a conversation with my husband about this um, because I'm a very deep person. So I need, you know, and that's what my husband is for me. He processes my depth conversations with me instead of avoiding it. So I told him and shared with him that I'm going to be intentional with everything that I do, my time, my relationship with my husband, my kids. And I'm asking myself, this is something that I'm currently doing right now, is is what that somebody bringing to me, how is that an intention towards me? Is this wasting my time? Is it effective and conducive to what it is that the vision that God gave me and my husband? I don't waste my time with foolery no more. I love people. And even in marriage, if you're not, if me, okay, so everybody who's been listening a while know me and my husband are marriage counselors. We have a degree in marriage and family counseling. We're marriage counselors. With that being said, if you as husband and wife, let's say you wanted to come to us and you wanted to get counsel by us and whatever, say the wrong is not going on and we got our practice and you're coming. One of the first things that I'm going to ask you out of my mouth are, are you ready for it? Because guess what? Coming to me and my husband is not going to change what's going on in your marriage unless you are ready to change. Mm, that's good. Me and my husband cannot solve the foolishness that's going on in your marriage unless you're ready to stop doing the foolishness. Mm-hmm. And that's where we mess up as husbands and wives is because we try to give the ownership to everyone else to solve the issues in our marriage. But we don't understand Everyone else was not standing on that altar before God, you you know, when you made that commitment and that vow of your marriage. So if you're not ready and willing to do the work, quit spewing what you're not really wedding, you know, ready to change on everybody else. Mm. I'm just saying, I'm going to keep it real. That's real. That's deep there. And so, yeah, I want to go over to uh, Leviticus, the the ninth chapter. And I want to say this is around the 23rd or the 24th verse. And in this particular case, uh, Moses and Aaron had went into a particular tent there where they were having a meeting at. Mm-hmm. And uh, when they came out, they blessed the people and they had presented a sacrifice there. And it said that uh, God appeared to all the people and fire came out from the presence of the Lord and consumed the burnt offering and the fat portions on the altar. Mm-hmm. And when all the people saw it, they shouted for joy and fell face down. Mm. Now in that, when you remember that that altar was built and they were given a sacrifice to God. Once that altar was built and the fire was uh, replaced, you have to remember that the chief priest and those that were responsible for keeping that, that fire going had to remove certain things so that the fire would not go out. Mm-hmm. Once again, listen to that. The fire was going. It was set by God. But sometimes when you burn, there's ashes and other things that may fall down into the fire that may put that out. Mm -hmm. You have to keep watch on that to remove those things so that the fire doesn't go out. Mm -hmm. And so I can sit here all day long and and, and think of a list of things that we can say are ashes and things that are keeping our fire burnt. Mm -hmm. One of those can be hate. That's true. Yeah. Mm Mm-hmm. We hate something or someone so much that we're putting so much emphasis on that that we're forgetting about our fire and it's putting our fire out. Wow. Mm -hmm. For some individuals, it could be shopping too much, spending money Mm -hmm. like it's nothing. Mm -hmm. It could be alcohol. Mm -hmm. It could be a list of different things that we're allowing that's 
causing our fire to go out. But we have to get to that point to where we keep that fire going. Mm-hmm. And so this is the one thing I really want everybody, I hope they can really understand this. If you keep the fire burning that you set, there's no need to start another fire. Come on here. If you keep that fire <laughs> burning with the wife that you set yes. in the beginning, Come won't on. be no need to go back and look for some more fire. Come on. You've mm-hmm. already got your fire lit and it's still burning. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, like I told you, I, I did a lot of things in Boy Scouts. We would keep the fire going for days because mm-hmm. the only thing you had to do once it was lit was to find a fuel source. Mm-hmm. You just go through the woods and you find some more wood to keep it on that fire. What I'm asking individuals to do is take a look at your relationship, add some more wood to that fire, mm-hmm. and let that fire burn. Yeah. Because I'm telling you, and we say this all the time, it's a big thing on Marriage Mondays with the kids, I mean with the kings, the way that your kids see you burn a fire mm-hmm. is going to be the way that they want to burn it. Mm-hmm. That's true. That so is if true. your fire burns out, that may be a good chance that the kids that you have, when they get out there and get married, get on their own, or they go treat that fire the exact same way. Mm-hmm. Are they just going to tend to it when it looks like it's starting to die down? Wow. Or do you have something on reserve to throw on it to make sure it stays up to a proper temperature? Mm-mm-mm. Wow, that is good. Yeah. So, hmm. and, you know, even when people think about old cliches, out of the frying pan and into the fire, you know, it's saying like you're jumping out of one thing and jumping into something, you know, worse than that. Mm-hmm. You know, for me, you can look at that a lot of different ways. You know, the fire, the, the, the frying pan is hot, mm. but the fire is even hotter. Mm-hmm. Sometimes mm-hmm. we need to get in the fire so we can feel some heat because that heat does something to us. Mm-hmm. And we know that the fire from God, when it burns in our hearts, when it burns in our relationships, it's not going to be easily distinguished. Mm-hmm. But the enemy comes to kill, steal, and destroy. He wants to destroy your fire. Mm-hmm. He doesn't want you to feel warm in the arms of that loved one that you have. He doesn't want you to feel warmness and feel protected or to be able to eat the blessings that God has given you because God is doing something new in you and he sets you on fire for a specific purpose. Mm-hmm. And the enemy doesn't want that to come forth. So we can sit here and talk to you all day long Mm -hmm. but you have to have that purpose to want that fire to keep going that is so true your fire is your business Mm -hmm. your attention needs to be on that fire and and like we said before you know we would go camping it would be other people around us we weren't worried about their fire we was worried about ours Mm -hmm. because we were the ones that were going to be warm sometimes it's not being selfish sometimes it's a necessity to take care of your own fire so that your light doesn't go out. That is so true. And I'm just going to say this one last thing because we're at the end of the show. Stop looking like you are sparking in your marriage Uh-oh. when you are not. Ooh. And see, that's what's going on right now with this pandemic. Because like I always say, I want to say I said it last week on the show. We are all at the same level playing field. You ain't hearing a lot about celebrities right now as much as they were pushed in our face before to idolize. Everybody is on the same level playing field. And so one of the things with social media is a good a tool. It, it definitely is, but a lot of people were faking the funk on social media. And right now, it's, it's chirping like crickets. So stop faking the funk like the, your marriage has a spark in it and it's sparking and it has a fire when it does not. Take this time right now and get that thing right. And so, hey, you know, I'm just saying, those, those are my last little parting words as we, get, we end the show. Yeah, and I think it's important for individuals to remember that, you know, uh, we like to compare ourselves with other individuals, and you know sometimes doing that can boost an individual, yeah. but sometimes it can be detrimental. Uh, don't worry about someone else's light. If I got a 40-watt bulb, then maybe that's 40 watts is all I need. Mm-hmm. But if I got a 60-watt bulb, then that, that's the light that I need for whatever light fixture that I'm trying to make shine in my house. Mm-hmm. So don't worry about someone else's chandelier. You just keep your, your chandelier lit. And sometimes when your chandelier is lit so well, it would be easy for you to take one bulb from that to give it to someone else so that they can light their place that they need to get some light into. And that's true. Very good. That is so true. So with that, we want to move on with our thought of the week. And our thought of the week comes from www.marriage.com. And it reads, don't forget to take time to fall in love again and again. You will walk through many phases of life together, but let that bring you closer together, not further apart. And once again, that comes from www.marriage.com. 
Well, we like to let you know that Marriage Mondays with the Kings is brought to you by our sponsor, Christian Humor, for slash inspiration. There's a group that's designed to uplift, inspire, and bring humor to everyday life in a Christian way. If you are into social media, please check them out simply by going to search them on Facebook at Christian Humor, for slash inspiration. We ask that you join us back next week, Monday, August the 10th at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time, because we will be discussing the topic, the family that I created versus the the family that I came from. The question of the week is this. Do you think that marriages suffer because they spend more time focusing on the family that they came from versus the family that they are creating slash have created? Mm, that's good. We that's, about to go down. Yeah, that's going to be deep. <laughs> that's going to be deep, deep. Mm. And so if you have any questions, comments, any topics that you would like to be discussed, we ask that you would visit our website, our webpage at www.marriagemondayswiththekings.com. So Mondays and Kings both have an S, www.marriagemondayswiththekings. When you go, you will see a pop-up that says subscribe to this page or enter your email or whatever the case may be. And so we ask that you do that as well. And we just want to thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to be right here with us, Marriage Mondays with the Kings. And we ask that you come back next Monday at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time And as always, keep it locked right here on KRGN 98.5 FM, The The Rock. Rock.